Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm James Larmer, Stefano Bove, <laughs> and we are First Reviews. Uh, so we're broadcasting here from the Tiff Bell Lightbox, and we're currently here welcoming our guest this afternoon, Jenna Saru, who's a French filmmaker and fellow film enthusiast, uh, on top of filmmaking, uh, writer, director, producer, actress herself. Uh, so, well, I guess I might as well just let you introduce yourself a little more. And just... Thank you so much. Um, yes, absolutely. I'm Jenna. I'm um, a director and an actress. And I've just had the world premiere of my debut feature film, which is a peer drama called L'Age d'Or. In English, The Golden Age. And it went amazing, so I'm very glad to be here for TF with you. So thank you so much for having me. Your movie premiered at uh, Massachusetts Film Festival. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the festival and, uh, and your experience with it. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, I've actually been there for the whole time. It's a festival um, which happens at the Regional Theatre in Arlington, near Boston. So we've been there for the entire festival because we really wanted to re attend and also see the other screenings. Mm -hmm. And it's a festival that is very good with independent movies. We really push talents, upcoming voices. Um, we saw films there that were just mind-blowing and really beautiful. The team is extremely hardworking. They are very dedicated. That like they work very hard for the festival to be a very welcoming place, and they received so many movies. So when we knew we were selected with Flash Doll, it was one of our very first submissions. Um, we were just very happy because it's a very exact atmosphere we were looking for. Just great filmmaking and also bold filmmaking in a way. We saw movies there that were really amazing, so we were very proud mm -hmm. to have Lash Door premiere there. We noticed that you had tons of locations in the movie and we loved all of them. Tell us a little bit more about the locations in the film. Thank you. True. We shot in about 35 exceptional locations. Really, what is um, amazing with them is that I only had my number one choices because what was essential to me as a director for the Golden Age was that the audience can really feel with all its authenticity, mm -hmm. the 60s, and also this atmosphere height fell because things were quite different at the time. There was no internet. It was right after the two world wars. And also because the film is also a tribute to Saint-Tropez, this village on the French Riviera, mm -hmm. where so many artists went to find inspiration. And I really wanted the audience, whether they actually lived the 60s, be able to relive it, or people who are too young, like me, to actually <laughs> have the privilege of living it in a way for the film. So we secured 35 exciting locations in Paris. We shot, um, we actually closed the Birakem Bridge near the Eiffel Tower, so it's a very big thing. I was wondering that, yeah, because we were yes. talking about it when we were watching, and I'm like, Paris is always so busy. Yes. In the shots, I was shocked that there was like no one around because it's always full of tourists. Absolutely, yeah. and also it's a pure drama. So even just for sound, it really needs to be closed down exactly. and we need to bring in the, the cars, the vintage cars. Yeah. We had a lot of cars, extra costumes, everything really. So that was really important. We also shot in a pure restaurant. We shot um, where we shot God Created Women with Brigitte Bardot, you know, all along the harbor of Saint Tropez, the Palmatural yeah. Beaches. Um, we also shot in a period train and a station. So that was, it's a very real train. Yeah, yeah, the train, yeah. So that was just <laughs> incredible. And uh, we also shot in Los Angeles a bit, where we built a Hollywood studio. Uh, and uh, yes, and also Paris. So that was just the most. It was an amazing artistic experience just to be able to actually film in those places. Thinking, like, what's the hardest part about keeping that like authenticity? Like obviously you said the locations uh, yes. were definitely an important factor, but like what other factors contribute to um, just keeping that aesthetic of the 60s? That's very true because obviously there's a lot of dimensions to it. Um, one that is extremely important, especially because it's mostly set in Saint Tropez, was the music. Because um, I'm actually, I've just watched a documentary on Netflix, which is called How the Beatles Changed the World. And I thought this is so true. I do so much research. I love the 60s. I love music. And at the time, music played such a huge part in bringing change. Because after the two world wars, especially the youth thought we had so many great inventions after those wars, but this time, we're not going to make work again with it. We're just tired of it. So mm -hmm. there was this huge hit, and the Beatles really took part into it to change the world and 
to just be the voice of all this you that was just tired and was longing for something it really, really new. They were really looking for a change. And I was very lucky. I managed to secure amazing titles. Um, one from Chuck Berry and one from Jimmy Reed. There's also I Come Satisfied, which was great for the Bible. So that was one of my first titles. And there is this big uh, dancing scene in the film that is happening right in the harbor in Central Bay. The place is just it's a historical place. It's right on the harbor. It's the exact place on the harbor where at the time so many people will take the time just to dance for hours and hours and it's another really important factor. And obviously as we can imagine, um, also all the cars. The That's hair. right, the cars as well. Yeah, you had a lot of classic cars in the movie yeah. as well. Me true, the yeah. train and also oh, the cars, yeah. the bikes, everything. everything. So these are things that we heads of the department and party our production coordinator, we really worked on because it's extremely important that every detail is very thought through. Because if one detail is not right, then it's not authentic and it doesn't feel pure anymore. So, and it, we will mention the locations. I, I really wanted this movie to happen because some things change, like Saint Tropez can change. And so we might not, I'm pretty sure in a few years we won't be able to shoot the same film. And I didn't know that, because um, as you know, the, the opening of a film uh, takes place in um, around the Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So yeah. it's even yeah. more clear to us that exactly. with the very last drama that filmed around the cafe yeah. so that's extremely important. I think it's really important for us filmmakers because we actually give tribute to places here to French patrimoine, but also in this case for large Dutch, all those artists that really brought change. How difficult is it to secure music rights? Music was so important to me as a director that we actually recorded it before filming. Um, so I started working on it a year and a half before we started filming because I knew that it takes a lot of time to secure the best songs. Okay. And also because I really uh, specifically wanted to record the music before we start filming because for instance for the dancing scene it's important that we dance on the exact music that we we'll use in post. So um, I, I just had a great time um, licensing the music because I just because also I took the time to do it right. And they were extremely um, understanding, they really understood that this film is a story that's never been told on the screen before. So uh, this is why I was lucky to have really the best titles. And a bit before filming, um, we recorded it in a Parisian, uh, actually studio near Paris, not in Paris, but in the Parisian suburbs, with a band I composed. It's a British uh, British singer, British uh, musicians that I composed, recorded. It was a very uh, exciting step of the film. We noticed that the musicians uh, in the movie <laughs> yes. uh, had um, resemblance to the Beatles. Yeah. Was that all? <laughs> was that yeah, all they're very British. Yeah, yeah. They're British. We, yeah. Because, yeah, it's maybe in a way they kind of, um, because the Beatles at the time were so important, so it's kind of a tribute. Um, but it's also a tribute to British music, because I love music. And the British um, bands at the time, in the 60s in particular, just had a huge influence. We may think on the Beatles, also the Stones, and so many also later. Um, so it's a tribute to them. So now that you have a successful film in a massive uh, uh, film festival, what is the next step uh, in, your, in your career, in your production company? Thank you. Uh, well, so this is actually the very beginning of a promotion and the film festival circuit. So. The world of premiere happens, and the premieres in different, in various continents and countries will be very important. There will be a premiere in LA and Europe, in France. It's really important. I really, because this film was really designed to be appealing to internationals. So it's really important that really all the continents in the world can see it and that the audience can discover it. So this will probably take a few time, and it's very important for me to to push the film. Um, and then if I mention more films, I'm really willing to work um, with A-level actors. Uh, one of my very first shorts under Belle Epoque film, my French feature film company, mm -hmm. was um, starring, it starred uh, Robert Sheehan from the Umbrella Academy. At the time, he was famous also for Misfits. Oh <laughs> he has a lot of fun. He's just a fabulous actor. He has so many fans around the world. And our DP was Oscar nominated. Mm -hmm. So I just was very happy to be able to work with such top actors. So it's something I'm willing to pursue in the future. Yeah, how long is that usually <laughs> the, uh, the whole uh, film circuit? So like how often, how long do you usually promote a movie for? I would say up to two or three years. Two or three years. So the premieres are really important and then the more you can get, um, 
But yeah, for the film Algeria, it's really it's really a theater film. You know, it's really a film for cinema. Some film can be more for DTV or VOD, but this film, like the sound, is incredible. The the work that was done on sound is incredible. The, as you can see, the locations look amazing. Yeah, the yeah. cinematography is beautiful. Yeah. And, Thank and you. In the, in the film, all all of your aerial shots. We're very well done. Thank you so much. But it does belong in the theater. It does. Oui, yeah, mais ça because it's like it's was designed as an experience. So yes, to be authentic. So obviously in the theater, it's it's a whole, the whole experience you can enjoy. So um, this is extremely uh, yeah, this is extremely important. Obviously, you have the current movie Large Door um, or the Golden Age. Yes. Um, but is there anything else that you're working on right now that you'd like to talk about, or anything, any plans for the future? For sure, um, I definitely want to direct and act more. I'm lucky I've been cast and hired as a director for an upcoming British horror comedy. Oh, that's so that's quite funny. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Filming both in uh, the UK and France. Horror comedy sounds interesting. Yeah. Yes, it's quite different style. Yeah. Very different. Very different. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Like a Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oui, oui, that's a great movie. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Definitely so, inspiration. <laughs> so that's cool. And there's also a peer drama, another peer drama that I started to write. Yeah, perfect. So this is an original, original piece that you're writing yourself. Yes, original script. So Jenna, we want to thank you very much for conducting this interview today. Thank you very much for coming all the way to Toronto. We hope you love the festival. We hope you like the city. We want to mention everyone. Uh, Jenna's Instagram page is Jenna Suru Real. You can check her out on Instagram and Lajdor Film on Instagram to check out her film. We are first reviews. You saw it here first.